morning, and I trust that you do, I'd ask that you turn with me to the book of Hebrews. Amen. Hebrews chapter 5, Amen. verse 11 <coughs> through 14. Once again, that is Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11 through 14. Amen. Hebrews chapter 5, verses 11 through 14. Amen. And it reads, Concerning him we have much to say, and it is hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. Amen. For though by this time now you ought to be teachers, you have need again for someone to teach you the elementary principles of the oracles of God. Amen. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. Uh For everyone who partakes only of milk is not accustomed to the word of righteousness, for he is an infant. But solid food is for the mature. For because of practice, have trained their senses to discern good and evil. Amen. True Bible this morning's message is the believer's identity. Amen. 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 (coughs) The believer's identity. How are you identified as a believer in Jesus Christ? (coughs) How are you identified as a believer in Jesus Christ? All right, all right. Are you identified as lost or saved? No, you're a believer. Amen. Are you identified as being a Jew or a Gentile? Are you identified as being black or white? Are you identified as a believer as being male or female? Are you identified as a believer... (coughs) As being old or young. Amen. The answer is simply this. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you are identified by two things. All right. Whether or not you are mature or immature. Whether or not you are mature or immature. Amen. There are only two types of believers. Those who are mature and those who are immature. Amen. Nothing else separates us in the kingdom of God and our daily walk except whether we are mature as believers or we are immature as believers. All right. That's the dividing line for us as believers. Some of us are mature. Some of us are immature. All right. That's where the line is set. Yeah. If you are a believer in Christ, you fall into one of those two categories. And this morning... We are going to go into God's word and actually find out what it means to be mature as a believer in Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't want to tell you you need to be mature and not explain to you what a mature believer looks like. All right. All right. 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 (coughs) That will do you a disservice this morning. Yes, it will. You need to understand how God sees the mature believer. There are certain characteristics of maturity in the body of Christ. Break it down. See, a lot of times we pray for the church's maturity. Mm-hmm. We pray for folks to grow in Christ. Right. We pray that the immaturity will pass away. We pray that we will grow. We pray for maturity. So this morning, we're going to break it on down for you. Amen. Thus says the word of the Lord concerning you and your level of maturity as a believer. Mm-hmm. Amen. That's what I always like about God's word. He, God has... And his infinite wisdom and his power and his might, he, he tells us to be one way and he tells us how to get there. <coughs> and when we, when we are not there, he tells us what that looks like also. So I'm not going to hold you long this morning, but if you have your Bibles, I want you to keep up with me this morning. And we're going to understand from God's word what it means to be mature in Christ Jesus. And likewise, what it is to be immature in Christ Jesus. Good news about today is you will fall into one of those categories. One or the other. <clears throat> you either is or you ain't. Or you ain't. 
Ain't no middle ground with God. All right. If you want to be in the middle ground, go read the Revelations and find out what he did to those who were lukewarm. Right. Amen. Spat out. The Bible says in Revelations that he spat them out of his mouth. Amen. Because he can't deal with you being lukewarm. All right. <coughs> All right. So you're either mature as a believer or you're immature as a believer. And when we get before we get started here, there's only one reason for you to be immature as a believer. That's because you just came into the fold. All right. No All other right. reason. There's no other reason for you and I to be immature as believers except the fact that we just came to Christ. Amen. <coughs> How many people have been walking with the Lord more than one year? Raise your hand. Amen. Okay. How many people have been walking with the Lord more than five years? Raise your hand. All right. No How many people have been walking with the Lord more than 15 years? Raise your hand. 20 years. 30 years walking with the Lord. 40 years. Put your hand down. I ain't going to keep going. But all of us in here have been walking with the Lord a number of years. We have been walking with the Lord a number of years. So why do we walk as babes? And I walk as mature believers. Step us up. And the only conclusion I could come up with in my mind was that we have a failure to understand what maturity looks like. It's one thing to talk about being a certain way, but there's another thing to understand what it looks like to be that way. So if you have your Bibles, turn over to the book of 1 Corinthians <laughs> chapter 2. We're going to look at the sixth verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6. Amen. And it says this. Yet we do not speak wisdom among <coughs> those, yet we do speak wisdom among those who are mature. A wisdom, however, not of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, who are passing away. But we speak God's wisdom in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God predestined before the ages to our glory. Amen. So as Paul <laughs> is writing into the Corinthian church in the sixth verse, he says this, maturity is shown when we receive God's word and we act upon it. Paul says right here, he says, we do not speak we do speak wisdom among those who are mature. It takes a mature believer to understand God's word and act on it. Amen. He Amen. says we speak it to those who are mature. But those who are immature <coughs> receive, the res they say things in church a lot of times. All right. See, that's why I don't get too excited when people say hallelujah when I'm preaching. All right. I don't get too excited when folks jump up and say amen. I don't. Amen. Doesn't bother me one way or another way. Because I understand that it's not about the hallelujah. Amen. It's not about the amen. But it's about the way you walk when you step out them doors. Amen. <clears throat> oh, because we dress it up in the church. Amen. We dress it up. Come in and you're clean, smelling good. And Make sure you got a nice little shave. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm. And there's nothing wrong <coughs> with a hallelujah and an amen when it's amen. backed up by action from what you hear in the word of God. Yeah. Amen. See, the mature believer can give you a hallelujah. They can give you an amen, and their actions will say that they have received the word of God. Yeah. All right. The immature believer will give you a hallelujah and they'll give you an amen, but their actions will not say that they have received the word of God implanted. Amen. That's true. <coughs> so as Paul speaks here to them, he says, maturity is strong when a believer receives the word of God and they act upon it. Amen. And he says, immaturity is seen 
when it's all lip service and there's no action behind what you have received. Because every time you walk into God's church, you receive God's word. And you have a responsibility to act upon it. Amen. And those who do not <laughs> act upon God's word is immature. Amen. Those who right. do act upon God's word show their level of maturity by what they have received. Yeah. Right. When you step in those doors, you receive something. Amen. When you come through the doors of the house of God, you receive something. Hmm. And that what you receive, you are required by God to act upon. Amen. Let's look over at 1 Corinthians chapter 14. 1 Corinthians 14. Amen. Stay with me this morning. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 20. Amen. And it reads, <coughs> Brethren, do not be children in your thinking. Yet in evil be babes. Amen. But in your thinking, be mature. Be mature. <laughs> Amen. So Paul goes on a little bit further in the book of Corinthians, and he comes back again, and he hits him with the same topic that he just hit him with a few chapters earlier. He said, let me explain something to you, because evidently there's a problem with your thinking, because your thinking is like a child. Right. If you know a child, a child does what a child's supposed to do. <clears throat> I don't expect a three-year-old to act like a 15-year-old. Right. I don't expect, expect a 15-year-old to act like a 30-year-old. Right. I expect everyone to <laughs> act within an age where they are, where they are at the present time. All right. I don't expect a 30-year-old to act like a 60-year-old. How would you like if I came to church and I just dropped my pants down below my butt? Say, I'm too old for that. You're all wrong, right. And you would look at me, you probably would think I was on something. <coughs> look at that old bald head black guy. He up there and got his pen hanging out on his butt. What's wrong with him? Well, look at Pastor Charles. He thought he had more sense than that. Amen. So there is a problem when your thinking is like a child. So Paul says, he says, Brethren, do not think like children. He's talking to grown folks. Hmm. He said, you need to stop thinking like a child. He said, maturity is shown when you think and you reason as an adult. Amen. He said, you got to be mature. He said, if you want to be childish and evil for anything, if you want to be a babe in anything, be a babe in evilness. Amen. Some of us master evilness. Mm. We adults in evilness. Amen. But we are children in the maturity of God. Righteousness. We are children when it comes to God's word. We are immature when it comes to God's word. But we are adults in evilness. Yeah. <coughs> we just as well tag it down That's right. by the things we say. And the way we think instead of building you up. Okay. Paul says maturity is shown when you think and you reason as an adult. It don't make no sense when we don't think and reason as adults. <coughs> if I'm thinking and I'm reasoning like my nine-year-old, I got a problem. I expect my nine-year-old to do what a nine-year-old does. Every night and then run the street without looking. Because he's nine. Yeah. Now, my big old wrong but run the street without looking, something wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Something wrong with that. And he says, immaturity is shown in childness. When you act childish, Paul said the only thing that shows is your level of immaturity. Hey, Amen. He says, ain't no maturity in acting childish. None at all. Let's go on. To have the Bibles turn over to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Amen. 